Hey yo, what is up Thrill Seekers? Today I am back here at Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. And man, look at Dr. Diabolical's cliffhanger. Every time I come over here, it's looking up beautiful. So, in terms of progress, really the main thing that we see is the different buildings that are um, kind of encompassing this ride footprint. Um, the main things are they are starting to build up this big concrete slab, which is going to house a lot of the queue line, um, which I honestly think will be pretty cool. Yes, it'll be switchbacks, but it'll be right in the middle of this ride. So as you're waiting in the line, you're gonna see this ride going all around you. From there, you're going to take it into this queue house. It's going to be themed to basically a factory kind of area from my understanding. Now, take everything I say with a grain of salt because I am not, you know, on the, uh, I'm not high up at Six Flags. I don't know exactly all of the theming elements or anything like that. But from my understanding, it'll be kind of a factory type um, feel. Um, you're going through Dr. Diabolical's factory where she is making this a uh, special elixir that she is advertising that will make everyone young again. So you will go through, you'll see a pre-show, which if I had to guess is going to be very similar to the um, section of the announcement where she talked about her elixir um, and then she walked over with her henchmen and started explaining how the elixir was just a front and that this ride and uh, that in reality she's building this ride to harness fear from people and um, and make her incredible monsters that will take over the world. So um, we're gonna see a pre-show in there. You're going to then come out the other side to a little locker area um, where you can put your stuff. Think about this as um, it's going to be free lockers, double-sided. Um, so you just plop your stuff in. As you exit, you get your stuff out the other side um, and it'll allow us to have a lot quicker dispatches because we won't have people having to go over to the other side, put their stuff over there. You don't have to worry about anyone taking your stuff or anything like that. So it's just gonna be a lot better for everyone. From there, you're going to go over to the station building. We can maybe see it from this angle, not really, but if I can, uh, I'll go over where that, uh, that white truck is a little bit later today and then we can see it. Um, but they have started pouring the foundation and like just getting all the walls and stuff set up for um, the station building which will house just a little bit of extra theming. Um, in terms of the maintenance area, uh, the maintenance shed is definitely coming together. That is the metal structure that you see right over there in the back. There you go, right over there. Um, and that is going to, of course, house the trains for the ride. There will be four trains in total. Um, only three can run at a time. So they are ordering an extra train just to increase capacity so that if we have a problem with one of the trains or um, if um, more, more common, um, one of the trains has to be in maintenance. Um, and to do like its annual maintenance checks, then we will still be able to run three trains at all times. Um, think of it, Superman has three trains. A lot of the times it'll run two trains, um, other than during super busy times of the year, like for example, Fright Fest or during summer, uh, you may see it run three trains. Um, but the reason why is the other train is almost always in maintenance um, and getting its annual maintenance done on it. Um, going to be a similar thing where one train is gonna be always in maintenance, um, but they are having an extra train so that they can run the maximum capacity at all times every single day. So yeah, this, this is going to be definitely a capacity monster here at the park. Um, they're going to be pushing for us to have minute or less dispatch times, especially with those lockers. Um, so really getting that throughput in should be getting somewhere between, I would say 800 and 1,000 riders per hour, which is pretty similar to the capacity that we get over here on Roadrunner, except we're doing it on here with 21 seats. Roadrunner has 36 seats, so kind of a nice comparison there. Um, but yeah, super excited for this ride. And let me get a shot over kind of closer to that new station building so that we can really get all of the, um, all of the stuff in here. 
um, being able to see all of the work that they are doing on the other side of this building because there is definitely not much to see right here other than a nice concrete slab in a, a, a semi-painted building but on the other side the construction is definitely more underway and here we are on the other side over here of dr diabolical's cliffhanger from this angle you can see a lot more in detail what i was talking about in terms of the maintenance area um, the maintenance area is this just massive <laughs> Um, kind of steel structure that you see right here um, and it is where they are going to be storing any trains that are not in service they also are going to put most of the trains into this storage area every single night so yeah this is where um, all of that kind of stuff goes um, right here in the storage shed in terms of other kind of progress um, we can see the station building is starting to be installed we also see um, that the floors the the droppable floors as well as the uh, gates are, are being installed if you uh, have seen Superman or any other floorless coaster you'll see that there are uh, the movable or sorry movable floors um, and then there are also um, some gates um, kind of at the front to make sure that people don't just kind of walk off the edge. Um, so those are going in. They're still in like uh, kind of bubble wrap looking um, looking wrap right now, uh, but you can see them right over here. Yeah, so those gates are being installed, which means really everything is getting ready for testing as soon as they can get those gates in the droppable floors in um, and the rest of the electronics in we can probably start seeing a train being moved over here to the maintenance area um, and as soon as there's a maintenance or sorry as soon as there's a train in that maintenance area we can expect testing to start very 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 soon we are going into seven day operations right now um, which means i may end up having a little bit more um, are, are a couple more construction updates than um, I have been in the past just because normally I'm really only to, uh, able to get here once a week um, and that's just on the weekend um, but now I'll be here basically all the time which means I'll be able to record you know multiple construction updates every week if there is actually progress. Um, there's definitely going to be a lot of weeks where there's not really that much progress. But um, definitely once testing starts and all of that, I will be able to be here really capturing that footage for you guys. And I'm really excited for that. Um, even more over here, you can see the air tanks in here. Um, those are um, what up from this is just pure assumption and what I know about other rides what those are uh, most likely pneumatic tanks um, to push air compression down into these brakes so that they can go up and down um, as those are adjustable brakes um, and it looks like the last couple are friction brakes making this a block zone <laughs> um, but yeah super super excited um, as this ride is really, really coming together. You can start to see, um, I mean, obviously the entire ride itself is finished, but you can start to see all of those smaller things, right? The, uh, the maintenance shed, the, the station building for the ride itself, all of that kind of stuff, um, all of the electronics, all of that um, are starting to come together, which is super, super exciting. Um, honestly, the uh, the track just kind of goes together like Lego pieces, but in terms of the actual electric wiring, the coding, the building of the buildings itself, those are the things that are going to take a lot longer. So as we see these, um, these things starting to near completion, um, yeah, it definitely marks a, um, a period in time where we're very close to seeing this thing up testing and hopefully pretty soon we'll we'll start to see um, some you know employees being picked for this area all of that kind of stuff as it will be its own separate area of the park with 11 operators operating this ride uh, one panel operator three attendants um, and then the other uh, what is that the other seven operators will be at different spots in the queue line that you will end up finding out pretty soon um, what those sections are as uh, those sections if i revealed them right now they would be 
um, definitely revealing some of the cool theming elements that are going to be in here. Um, there are going to be locker attendants, I can tell you that right now. Um, and yeah, there's going to be locker attendants, it's going to be a grouper in the station, a greeter out at the front, um, as well as some people in that, in that theming building right there to, to guide you guys through and all of that kind of stuff. So I'm excited for that. Um, but anyways, yeah, that is uh, the end of this construction update here for Dr. Diabol Close Cliffhanger. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Of course, like, comment, subscribe, all of those types of things. And I hope to see you guys all next time as I will be um, recording more construction updates, hopefully coming out basically every single week. There's definitely going to be some weeks that I miss, some weeks where there's more than one but um, definitely turn those post notifications on so that every time I do upload one, you can just click on it and be one of the first to watch it. Anyways, guys, I'll see you all next time. Like I said, peace out. Bye.